Well, hello there, and welcome to season number 15 of Citadel Gray Line. This is the show that we talk all things Bulldogs, and I'm John Rawl. Been doing this again 15 years, and it is wonderful to be back with you as we're getting ready for a kickoff of another Bulldog football season, and we'll be here throughout the season taking your questions and comments for our great Citadel Gray Line team. We have a wonderful time doing this each and every year. And for 15 years, this guy right here, Jeff Hartzell, has been a big part of what we do here at the Citadel Gray Line. And I know, Jeff, you're excited about another year of Citadel football. I am, I am always, John. You are and always excited. Still, still echoing. Okay, well, we'll try to fix that a little bit as we go forward. But, Jeff, I will shut up here so the echo will not be quite as bad. we got some big news on Bulldog sports front, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with the Citadel football team. That's, That's right. right. As, as you, you can, can read, read right, right under, under my, my face, face there, there. I'm, I'm now, now the sports, sports editor, editor at the Post and Courier. Really, really excited and blessed to uh, uh, succeed the great Malcolm DeWitt as sports, sports editor, editor at the Post and Courier. Career, and uh, I'll, I'll miss, miss the, the uh, old and all, and the, all friends the friends I've made there over the years, years Dora and I. I. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm excited, excited for this, this new role. role. And tell us about who's taking over Jeff Hartzell's shoes. Filling the, the uh, small, small shoes, shoes of Jeff Hartzell, Hartzell will be Andy Andrew Miller, Miller, who, uh, who uh, has, has been, been a long. He's been at the paper almost as long as I have. And, uh, and uh, he's, he's coming, coming back, back to sports, sports after, after a brief stint in, in the news department. department. And, he, and he'll, he'll be, be covering, covering the Citadel, the, Citadel, the College, College of Charleston, Charleston the, Stingrays, the Stingrays, and the Battery, and the battery for the paper. paper. And those, those are beats all, all covered, covered in the past, past uh, and covered, covered very well. well. So, so we're, we're happy, happy to have Andrew back. back forth. Forth. We're happy to have Andrew back. We're happy to have Andrew, by the way, join us right now on the Citadel Gray Line. Hello, Andrew. Welcome in. Hey, John, hey, John, how are you? Thanks, thanks for having, having me. Thank you for coming on, and congratulations on the new gig. Well, well thanks. thanks. It, it's, it's kind, kind of, of an old, old gig. gig. I, I, I did, did cover the Citadel, Citadel for five, five years, years. Uh, from, from 19, 19, well, 96, because really I, I went to all of the 92 games. games. Uh, uh, Bob Lang was, was the Citadel beat writer, and then I took over the beat in 93 and covered them, I guess, four years with Charlie, and then we were here with the Powers. Uh, but I covered all, all the civil stuff. stuff. I did that for five, five years. years. Really, really enjoyed really myself on that beat. Looking, looking forward to uh, uh, reuniting uh, uh, with a lot of guys, guys and a lot of people that I met on the beat, beat uh, 20, 20, 25, 25 years ago. Yeah. Well, let me be quite honest here, as we have a, a great, great cast here. And I'm very excited to have Andrew join us. But I got to give props to Jeff Hartzell. Jeff, you're not going to be quite on here like you were for 15 years. And on behalf of myself and all of our great viewers and listeners of Citadel Gray Line for 15 years, back in 2008, you, myself, and Jim Waddell got this thing going. Thank you, Jeff, for all that you've done for covering the Citadel beat period. But specifically from my heart, thank you for your great contribution on Citadel Gray Line. Well, thank, thank you, you for, for having, having me and putting up with, with me uh, for 15, 15 years, years, John. And uh, it, it's, it's been, been a great, great time on the Citadel Beat. Uh, I've, said I've said it many, many times, times, but the kids, the kids that the Citadel kids, kids are, are there's, there's a few, a few knuckleheads, but by and far, they're really, really great, great kids. kids. And yeah, I've enjoyed getting to be around them through all the years and watching their victories and how hard they take care of their beats. As, as well. well. And our Siddle, Siddle fans, fans have been great to me as well, well to me and my wife, and, and we, we really, really appreciate you. that. And the wonderful news, although Jeff's moving on to greener pastures, he's not leaving Charleston. Again, he is the sports editor now of the Post and Courier, which I think that means, Jeff, front page stories every day on Citadel Sports, right? I think, I think that's, that's what, what that means, means, right, right Andrew? Andrew? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all tickled. Again, hey, we want to let everybody know here at the Citadel Gray Line, we got a great team of, of people like Andrew and Jeff when we're able to get him, but we appreciate our great sponsors that are part of this team, and that includes IPS Packaging and Automation, IPS Packaging located in the upstate of South Carolina. And, of course, we have a Big Red Palmetto sponsorship as well where we'll be giving a trivia question a little later in the day 
for people to be able to text us and win big prizes. Hey, guys, Citadel football in action against the Campbell Camels here this week. And hopefully, speaking of prizes, Brent Thompson's team's looking to walk away at the end of the year with a SOCON trophy. Guys, set the scene. Andrew, I guess it's more on you. What's going on with Citadel football here in 2022? Well, well, I, I think, think the biggest, biggest question, question, the question, question we're not, not going to get answered answer until, until really tomorrow, tomorrow at, at, at 6 p.m. up in Blue's Creek is, is who's going to be the starting quarterback. quarterback. Now, now, if you, you have, have you asked me, me and, and you had, had to put, put the, you know, a mortgage payment, payment on or something like that, I do think, think it's going to be Pate there, former grad transfer for all of our, I think he's going to be the quarterback when that first snap is taken at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. I think, I think other, other than, than that, that uh, really, really the, the other big, big question mark, mark on least offensively is uh, that, that interior, interior offensive, offensive line that had, had to replace three, three guys, guys there. there. Brenton Thompson, Thompson at, at his, his uh, press, press conference on Monday said he liked the transition that, that the three interior line, line was making, making so, so that sounds like a good, good, good sign for them. But, but, uh, you know, you who's going to replace Wally, 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 Wally Webb Webb and, and his play ability in the passing game? game. I think that's, that's another uh, big question mark they have. have. And I think and defensively, you know, they got, they got nine spots back. back. They have, have a count on 11, them, either, either if you're senior, senior, senior graduate, graduate transfers, or in their, in their two charts. So, so I think the defense is going to be strength for this team, but really it's going to be how quickly can the offense get used to new quarterback. And, and a new, new offensive, offensive line, line and, and, and a new big, big play maker, maker in, in, in the passing game when uh, those on the side of the ball. So, so I think that's kind of the story going on tomorrow night against Campbell. Now, Andrew, you, you mentioned this graduate transfer. Is, is Have you, and I apologize, I haven't been reading every single day's coverage of the Post Courier. Have you chronicled this whole deal? Yeah, yeah they, 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 there, there are 11, 11 grad 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 that, that have come in, in the program. program. That's the most, most uh, in really the history. history. Most, most of the guys are going to be on um, uh, the uh, defensive side of the ball. Again, 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 I think, I think that's, that's going to be a huge storyline uh, this, this year. How, how those, those new guys, guys how those 11 grad transfers are kind of kind integrated, integrated in the team, team integrated, integrated in the program, program. and how's how, those, how, how that team, team chemistry is going to be. It seems going to be good, good right, right now, now. Uh, but, uh, but I think that's, that's going to be one of the big storylines throughout the entire season, how those guys are integrated into the lineup and the future roster. Okay. And, Jeb, going back to you just a second, that seems to be a lot of – transfers in more than we've seen in, in the history of Citadel football. It is. It is. Uh, about, about twice, twice as, many as many as in recent, recent years. years. And, and uh, I, think I think a couple, couple things, things are in play, play there. there. This, this is, is the final year of Brent Brent's Brent's contract. contract. So I definitely, definitely feel, feel like, like he feels, he feels the, the pressure, pressure to win this year. year. Uh, he uh, knows he's got a winning record in order to get a new contract. The Citadel. The Citadel. And, and then they, they lost, lost some players, players sort of unexpectedly, unexpectedly in the offseason, off like Ryan, Ryan Farfee, the baseball, baseball player, player slash, slash receiver. He was, he was supposed, supposed to come, come back next year, year, but he went ahead and had his, 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 his pro baseball, baseball degree. degree. And then, and then they, they had a kicker, kicker who actually came down, down, down with leukemia and is, and is being treated right now. So they needed to replace them, and they did that through the transfer portal as well. Those are a a couple, couple of reasons, reasons why, why uh, the number of uh, transfers spiked this year. year. Okay. And I heard you mention the, the illness there. We also lost a member of the Citadel football family over the couple of months. I don't know which one of you were on the beat when that happened. I was, I was and you were catching me off guard. Okay. Well, yeah, that's fine. Um, I think he was someone who didn't see a whole lot of playing time, but still, uh, I know a lot of the players, of course, court close with a with a teammate or just a former teammate. Actually, it was Pat Pat Keith. Keith. Yeah, was the was young, young man's name. name. He was from yeah, Northwest yeah. Florida. I remember that part, yeah, yeah. but don't don't want to leave him out in his uh, one, memory. One, one thing to mention, mention and, uh, I, wrote I wrote about this before, before Andrew, Andrew came, came on. on. Uh, uh, Peyton, Peyton Garrett, Garrett actually was, was interested in being a grad assistant coach. At the, at the Citadel, Citadel. He, he, 
and, uh, and uh, he had he dropped, had dropped his, his resume, resume at, at Brent Thompson's, Thompson's office. office. And, and uh, Brent, Brent suddenly, suddenly found, found himself in need of a quarterback and discovered, and discovered that Peyton had an extra year of eligibility. So, so that's, that's how that all came out. Uh, the, the quarterback's, quarterback's been on him and him to Andrew uh, and, and the media uh, until uh, uh, his name. name. That won't have to game time. time. So hopefully, hopefully Andrew, Andrew catch up with Peyton, Peyton Derrick sometime soon, soon. soon. And, and get his, his uh, side, side of the story. Of the story. Uh, is that is that a, an assignment that I'm hearing coming from you, boss? <laughs> that, that is. is. You don't know, <laughs> man. Yeah, 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 I will, I will definitely get on that. Yeah, they, they, unfortunately, the uh, uh, Fortune Race Department, Brent Thompson, is not any any of the quarterbacks available during the preseason. That was, that was told to be the first, first practice. practice. So, so uh, my dream is uh, uh, the red freshman and kind of battle and. For that, that, that starting, starting spot, spot yeah. uh, he took he all reps, reps in, in uh, free practice. practice. Uh, so so uh, they, they were they, they, they didn't, didn't want to get back controversy as they like to like say. Today. So, so um, they made a ball and then hopefully, hopefully after, after uh, the game, game on Thursday night, I'll be able to talk to whoever the starting back is. is. But, but again, again, I really believe it's going to be fair. Well, guys, I think most fans would agree, maybe even some inside the program, this is a do or die year for Brent Thompson. He's got to get it done this year, or we're likely going to have a change just what we saw and like we saw in the basketball program. There's no, There's no question, question about, about it. it. You know, Brent, Brent won, won his, his first, first 10 games, games as the Citadel coach. coach. And, and since, since then, then, he's 22, 22 and 37. 37. So, so, yeah, yeah uh, they've been basically 500 feet since that, that first year, year except for the COVID, COVID year. year. It was just a real, real struggle, struggle for the Bulldogs. For the Bulldogs. So, so, yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, this is the last, last year of his contract. contract. So, so what, what exactly he has to do to his job, job only to catch you, that, you know, that, 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 I would that, 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 at least seven, seven wins. wins. Seven wins. What do you think, Andrew? On an 11 game yeah. schedule, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I agree with that. They, they, they've, they've got a. Be the upper echelon of the Southern Conference, at least battling, competing for the Southern Conference, Southern Conference championship. championship. They have to make a significant step forward, I think, unfortunately, for, for, for Brent Brent Knight next, next year. year. And, and, and I, I, I don't know, know Brent very well, 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 but have found, found him to be a uh, really, 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 really nice, nice guy. guy. Very, very uh, uh, somebody who's very loyal, loyal to his players, players obviously, and a good guy to coach. Yeah, but yeah, he's but got to, at the end of the day, you've got a football game. game. If you're not going to win football games, then you're not going to be around. around. That's, That's true. true. And I think you hinted at, at this earlier, but you're seeing a lot of these Hail Mary-type actions on the roster because of the do-or-die status? Well, that's my opinion. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, that's just my opinion. opinion. Yeah, yeah. And, as and as I mentioned, mentioned circumstances have also played into that. Losing guys like Ryan, the intense deal. Unexpectedly, unexpectedly, they had, they to, had replace to replace those guys, guys as well. well. But no, no question, question, they hit the, they hit the hit portal, portal hard, hard with different immediate, immediate help. help. Okay, Andrew, your thoughts? Yeah, I, 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 I think, think that probably played into, into why, why they are seeing 11, 11 transfers. transfers. And, 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 you know, COVID, COVID because, because of the way that, that players, players are going to get extra eligibility and things like that. You know, the other roster, roster is, is it's such, such lux. Lux. you got to you got to find, find guys on there, there who come in and, in and play immediately. Now, now, I don't I think we're going to see a ton, ton of starters. Of starters. I, think I think besides Eric, 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 there might be one or, one or, excuse excuse me, one or two, two other starters, starters uh, from, from um, the graduate transfer portal. portal. Uh, but, uh, but there are guys, and I'm story about this at the tomorrow's paper, Thursday's paper, about how those guys, especially on the defensive end, have given that a lot more depth. depth. So, so instead of playing, playing 15 guys, guys per game, they're going to play, play between 18 and 20. They don't, they don't feel, feel the drop off between, between the first team and the second team guys. guys. It's going to be gonna very, very simple. So, so that, that means that, that the physical defense should be a lot fresher in the middle of late, late third, fourth, fourth quarter. And uh, they really they feel, feel like, like this is going to be, be one of the best best sets of teams team they've had. had. Okay, a defensive team this year. I like the sound of that. Of course, Brent Thompson comes to the Citadel after he when, when he took over the reins of El Cid. He was a guy who came more from that offensive attack as he was 
the offensive coordinator on that 2015 SOCON championship team. And and uh, they say defense wins championship. Well, that 2015 and 2016 team certainly matched each other's different units with great bulldog play. If you have a question or comment here for Citadel Gray Line, we have a Charleston area area code. You can call us at 843 843- 779-8496 if you've got something to say to Jeff Hartzell or our new Citadel beat writer for the Post and Courier, our new old Citadel beat writer, and that's Andrew Miller. Feel free to text us at 843-779-8496. Would love to get you all's commentary. The Citadel is up in North Carolina to start season under uh, whatever six under Brent Thompson as the 2022 season begins at Campbell. This is a six o'clock kickoff from Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Jeff, I know for a long, long time you had that date circled on your calendar, Bowie's Creek. You've traveled a lot of places as your coverage of Citadel sports stretched into a couple def- decades, but I don't think you ever made it to Bowie's Creek for a game, Jeff. That is, that correct. is correct. I have, I have never, never been, been to Bowie's Creek. Bowie's- <laughs> and I can't, and I can't say, say I'm um, hard, hard work to avoid the trip. trip. Uh, this <laughs> year, uh, Campbell's is an interesting case. case. They only they won three, three games, games last, last year, year. But, but they, they seem to be a program, program on the upswing. upswing. They're picking pick, pick second, second in the Big South, South this year, year and, and I believe they're, they're joining, joining the Colonial in, in the future. future. Does that sound right, Andrew? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Really? That's a heck of a step up. Yes, it is. It is. And they, they are coached by, by Mike, Mike Minter, Minter, who you might you remember, remember used to play the Panthers, Panthers back, back in the in day. day. And, and they've, they've also really, really hit portal hard, hard in the last, last couple of years. years. And actually, and actually someone rated, rated them the number one, one recruiting, recruiting class in FCS, FCS last, year. last year. I'm not, I'm not quite, quite sure how you go about, about those rankings, rankings in FCS level, level. but, but uh, uh, that's what someone said. And they have transfers from Iowa State. Coastal, Coastal, East East Carolina, Carolina, Minnesota, Minnesota, Central Central Florida, Florida, Virginia Virginia Tech, Tech, Wake Wake Forest, Forest, Vanderbilt, and Army. Army. And And just just a couple couple of local local guys guys in the team, they have have a skill receiver receiver from Berkeley High High School, School, Devon Devon Purcell. And they have have an all-conference lineman in Fort Dorchester. Dorchester. His name is is Tyler Tyler Murphy. He's He's six six foot foot eight, 355 pounds. pounds. So, so that's, that's a big, a big boy, boy there, there on the line, line for the, for the fight, fight fight camels. All right. Well, we're excited that's about nice the start of the season for sure. Okay, game one at Campbell, and this is a team like Jeff just mentioned has a lot of transfers themselves, and this will gain a game that you'll only be able to see on ESPN Plus. Unlike last year when the Citadel started at Coastal Carolina, you could maybe find that on some select streaming options out there. This one's going to be a little bit more of a challenge to find, but the Bulldogs return home for the SOCON opener September 10th as ETSU. They get SOCON play in game number two as the Buccaneers, the defending SOCON champions, by the way, come to Charleston for a game on September 10th, a four o'clock kickoff at Johnson Hagen State and the dogs on the road at Mercer, followed by their money game this year at App State on October 1st. Furman is the opponent for parents weekend, October 8th. Then on the road at Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg, taking on the Walford Terriers. Then it's a, another road trip right back up the interstate to Cullowee, Western Carolina. Andrew, get those bags packed come October <laughs> for sure. Then October 29th, it will be the Sanford Bulldogs coming in for a game at Johnson Haygood Stadium. And then homecoming is September, or rather November 5th against the Chattanooga Mox. And then a game against a Division two or three or NAI opponent, for that matter. I don't know what Virginia University of Lynchburg is, but they are coming in for a game on November 12th. And then the Shaco is up for grabs as the Citadel and VMI get together November 19th. So for a team like Jeff said they need to win seven, eight games this year, uh, it's going to be tough to get to that number, fellas. That's, That's a, a tough, tough schedule. schedule. Holy, Holy cow, cow, especially, especially at the beginning, the beginning there. there. Yeah. If, if, if they're, they're going to be an upper, upper division, division so team, team, they've got to be able to handle. I mean, I mean that's, that's my opinion. opinion. Uh, if, uh, if they, they lose, lose that, that game, game it's not, not looking, looking good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I agree, agree with that. that. One, one of the things, things that, that uh, Brent Thompson, Thompson said, excuse me, has uh, stressed uh, during preseason is getting off to better, better starts. starts. Uh, they start each practice kind of in a two-minute drill. Um, um, kind of, kind of both, both offensively, offensively and defensively, defensively. They, they 
really, really wanted, wanted to get to get the tech tempo up all the beginning of the they think that's going to help them get out a better start because that, that seemed to be an issue with them, them uh, last, last year. Andrew, how much access have you had at practice? I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd say probably, probably the first, first three minutes, minutes of a half dozen, dozen practices, practices in, uh, in, uh, since, since it started, started in early August. August. Um, you know, yeah, that, that's, that's never been an issue. Brent, 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 let's, let's me come, come out there and watch. watch. Yeah. That's, 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 that's one, one of the reasons, reasons that I think that Peyton Peyton there is going to be the starting quarterback. Most of the time I was out there, he was playing the most of the starters. And this is a guy who comes from, I guess, the Mike Ayers era at Wofford where the option was a lot more in use? Oh, oh definitely. definitely, yeah. yeah. No, I, I was, was uh, the, uh, I, covered I covered this little old Charlie, Charlie Taft, Taft was the head, head coach, coach, and they, they ran, ran the, the, the wishbone. They had, had great, great uh, fullbacks. They, they had Everett, Everett Sands, Sands the first, first year, year I was there. Actually, actually funny, funny, Everett, Everett sold, sold me my, my first, first uh, uh, computer, uh, uh, the desktop, desktop computer. computer. Uh, and then, and then Travis, Travis took over, over from, from him, him, and he's, he's a guy that I've known, known for, for you know, you know, 30, 30 years. years. He had a great, great career, career not only in the Citadel, but uh, in the NFL. Um, so, so, yeah, yeah. The, the, it was a wishbone option in the back. back. Uh, they had some it's great, great, great team back. back, uh, back, 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 back okay. Andrew, you officially passed the smell test. We'll, we'll let you in on the beat writing if you got that coverage of the 1990s Charlie Taff era down. Yeah. Okay, well, as we mentioned, it's going to be tough sledding for the Citadel here to get to that magic number that maybe needs to be met for Brent Thompson to survive and, and maybe get an extension into the upcoming season. And we, we talked about some of the transfers in. What do we know about new faces? Are we going to see a lot of knobs, for example, get a chance at playing this year, Andrew? I, 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 I don't I, 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 with as with many, many fifth-year seniors, seniors that, are that are on this roster and guys, guys that are, especially defensively, I don't, I don't see a lot of freshmen coming in and, and making an impact. impact. I, think I think we're going to see any new faces. faces. Uh, they're they're, they're going to be most of them. Defense, 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 excuse me, I apologize for this. Uh, Brett, Brett Russell, Russell, the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Wofford uh, linebacker, linebacker, he's going to be a lot of action. Then they brought in a transfer, a defensive back. Trayvon Wallace, Wallace North, North Carolina, Carolina Central. Central. I think he's, he's another, another guy, guy that's going to have an impact. Uh, McDowell, he's a, he's a defensive lineman, number, number 20. Um, um, in the scrimmage that I saw, he was all over the place, place making plays. Play. So, so, I think I those are the three main, main quote unquote, new things that are going to have the biggest impact besides Peyton Harris. Okay. Yeah, I only count three true freshmen on the two DD. And, uh, Two of, Two of those, those. One, one is on the is on offensive, offensive line, line. so he, he probably, probably won't play, play much. much. And, and one, one is Chris Hilton, Hilton at the Steve. And, and uh, I'm not sure how to get in either. either. So, yeah, so, yeah I, don't I don't expect a lot, a lot of, of true freshmen to, to see the field this year. Well, whatever the formula is for success, that's what uh, most of the fans, including yours truly, is looking for here as we start a brand new year of Citadel football. Now, with this opening game against Campbell and their color scheme and the fact that it's a road game and it's also on a Thursday, it got me thinking about what we're going to ask this week for our Big Red Palmetto trivia question. So let me fire that away. Of course, Big Red Palmetto joined by IPS Packaging as our co-sponsors here of Citadel Gray Line. And here is our Big Red Palmetto trivia question for the week. If you happen to correctly guess this, just text us here at 843-779-8496 and we'll get you something set up, a $25 gift certificate to BigRedPalmetto.store. The trivia question this week is, and Jeff, you can't answer this, even though you're not officially, I guess, a host of this show after today. You were there for this one. 2016 was the year. It was the season opener, the Citadel at the Mercer Bears on a Thursday in Macon, Georgia. Orange and black, the same color scheme as Campbell for the Mercer Bears. And it was the second play from scrimmage that night that a guy named Tyler Renew ran for a touchdown. As the Citadel had the ball first, and he scored a touchdown on the second play of the game. I want y'all to text me, if you know the answer, the amount of yards that touchdown run was. If you can tell me that, 
you'll get a $25 gift certificate courtesy of Big Red Palmetto Dot Store. The great Tyler Renew, 2016 of the year at Mercer, season opener, and he scampered down the field for an exciting touchdown in what would end up being, Jeff, a game that was a little bit too close for comfort. The Citadel did escape with a 24-23 win, and it was a great nail-biting win for a game that would prove to be the first of 10 consecutive wins as the Citadel started that 2016 season. Yeah, yeah uh, what a great, great start, start to Brent Thompson's career, career winning, winning the, the Citadel, Citadel winning, winning this first 10 games, games and, of and of course the second, second of two straight SoCon title. title. And, do you, and I don't want you to answer, but do you remember that number, the number of yards? I, I certainly, certainly don't. don't. <laughs> okay, good. Well, if we can't stump Jeff Hartzell, then we might just be able to hold on to that gift certificate here for the week. Okay, fellas, let's talk real quick while we've got both Jeff and Andrew on with us. Any other news, football-related, not necessarily with the, the team, but uh, any other goings-on that we need to know football before we switch over? Because in the offseason, since we were last on the air here, big news on the basketball front. So I'll let you guys tell me what's going on. Well, let's, well, let's catch, catch up with the, the uh, Bulldogs, Bulldogs in the NFL. NFL. Yes, uh, Andre, Andre Roberts, Roberts is now with the Panthers. Panthers. Uh, his thirteenth uh, year in the league. league. What an amazing career! And he'll be he's wearing number eighteen for the Carolina Panthers this fall. He's been able to piece together as a, basically now, now just a kick returner. Uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't play, play much receiver anymore, anymore, but but he's so, so good, good at kick returner that he's, he's been, been able, able to uh, stay in the league, league for thirteen years. years. And, and then looks like Dee Delaney going to stick with the Buccaneers. For a, for a second, second straight, straight year, year, he was, was all American quarterback at, at Citadel. And, and Raleigh, Raleigh Webb Webb really had a good preseason season season with the Ravens, Ravens as an undrafted draft free agent, agent. But, but got, got cut, cut yesterday as they cut down, down to 53 players. players. And, and I'm, I'm hoping, hoping that Raleigh can find my place on the practice squad, squad with, the with the Ravens, Ravens or maybe another team will give him a shot. Yeah. Unfortunate about Riley. I saw some photo that was out there on the web of him like running away with the ball, like he may have gotten a touchdown or something like that in the preseason. He caught, he caught a 34 yard TD against the Cardinals, the Cardinals and then, and then had, had a 38 yard, yard catch, catch uh, in, uh, in another, another game. game. So, so uh, I, I, yeah, he, yeah, he, he definitely, definitely did, did what, what he, he could do, do to, to make his case, case in the in preseason. The pre-season. But, you know, as an undrafted free agent, it's a long shot. But, but I, I think, think he did enough to, to, especially on special teams, to, to warrant a practice squad spot. Well, we wish him the best. So it looks like we've got two possibly. Maybe he can get on a practice squad opportunity, Raleigh Webb, for the Citadel football alumni, if you will. But great job for all of them to make to make the league. And it just proves you can go to the NFL from the Citadel. In fact, Andre, I believe, is in season number 15, I think. 13. 13. I'm sorry. 13. You probably just said that. Yeah. Um, what, a, what a statement. I think the average length of an NFL career is somewhere less than three years. Yeah. yeah um, as, as I said, said he's, he's been, been able, able to, to – and, and I've, I've lost, lost track, track of the teams, teams he's been with. with. Uh, <laughs> seven, maybe. maybe. Uh, but like he's, he's – He's created, he's created that, that niche, that, that pick return, return and, and he's, he's guaranteed to bust, bust two or three earnest season. season. So, so uh, he's, uh, really he's really made, made that, that into a, a valuable role, role to be able to, to stick, stick in the league, league for as long as, as he has. has. Well, course, those guys get to enjoy a week off. Maybe Andre will come over for Thursday's game against Campbell since the Panthers likely are going to give their players a couple of days off. Hey, Andre, come on over. An alumnus of this show, we need to get him back on here. I I uh, don't quite have the direct connection I did when he first got started, but if you're uh, watching, Andre, we'd love to have you. In fact, I want to learn more about your golf game. That guy is one heck of a golfer right now. So we've got football alumni, uh, stadium improvements. Did they get the new logo at the 50-yard line this year? Andrew? Andrew? Um, Because I don't know what the logo looked like like last year. year. I I I know that the field was an excellent. I don't know. I don't, I don't think, think they, they had. had. Uh, that's that's going to take, take a couple of years, years, I think. I think, I think it's, it's still, still the old, old 
Okay. Walk, walk. I, one reason I asked is I saw somebody put out an image, like a graphic, and it had it there. And so I thought, well, yeah, it makes sense because, you know, it is the new new brand, and it's uh, – it's a nice brand. Anyway, that's a silly question, but uh, well, here's, 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 here's one, one for you, John. John. They're, They're moving, moving the core of cadets, cadets to the opposite side, side of the of home stands. stands. Yeah, they'll, they'll still be on the home, home side, side, but they'll, they'll, if, you're if you're in the press, press box, box, they'll be on the, the left, left side, side instead of the right. right. Does that make, that make any difference, difference to you? you? It doesn't make a difference to me, but what do they give a reason for it? They're starting some special seating there in the right hand corner. Uh, I, think I think it involves, involves catering, catering and things, and things like, like that, that, so they so could they charge, charge a little more. more. So, so they, they needed, needed to clear out some space there. there. So they're so moving, moving the core to the left, left side. side. Okay. Well, I do know one thing that uh, they better have on that other end, and that's plenty of bathrooms because when you got <laughs> two thousand people that are definitely going to be at the game, that could be taxing. Especially, it's going to be more men's restrooms needed than women. So hopefully that end of the stadium's got uh, the, the ability to, to handle all that. Well, well it will change, change their, their overtime, overtime strategy because Prince Thompson, Thompson likes, likes to go toward the core in, in overtime. overtime. So he'll, he'll be going, going the other, the other way, way now. now. Uh, I think so for me, selfishly, I'd rather just see that other side of the stadium get fixed because that, that's kind of uh, childish, uh, high schoolish. To have this now five years, I think, where we still don't have another stand over there. And I know it's got to do with money, but come on. The answer, the answer every, every time, time is fundraising. fundraising. Yeah. They, haven't they haven't raised, raised the money, money yet. yet. All right, let me get I, that I, check I, out. Where is it? Uh, I wish <laughs> I had it. Been a, it's been, it's a, been a long, long time. time. It's, it's way, way overdue. overdue. Yeah. Yeah. I think even I saw I saw something at the Post and Courier the other day that it looks like your your neighbor across the street from Johnson Haygood, Stony Field, has seen some improvements done over there. Yeah, it's, yeah, just, it's, just, it's just, just the field, field itself. itself. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Andrew. Andrew. I was going to no, say, it's, it's just, just the field, field itself. The field used to flood. They had a track around, around there. there. They, okay. It's just surface track. The field is down. Now. The same, same kind of field as the Citadel has. But as far as the actual Okay, because I thought that thing was going to get destroyed because of all the flooding. Oh, okay. All right. Way over you as well. Burke High School has had to travel for its home games for the last, I don't know, five or six years, maybe longer. And so they'll finally get to play home games at home. Well, good news there. Okay, we've covered the. Football beat, I think, pretty well. Let's move over. To, I'm going to put Jeff on task here because I think you were still on the beat. We haven't got your reaction to the dismissal of Duger Balcom and the hiring of Ed Conroy. Yeah, yeah really, really disappointed, disappointed for Duger. Uh, he, is he is a, a good, good coach, coach and an even, even better, better person. person. And, and I, I think, think, you know, you know he did, did the best, the best he, he could, could under, under difficult circumstances. circumstances. But it'll, but it'll, you know, you know Citadel, Citadel basketball has only won 20, 20 games, games twice. twice. In its, in its history. history. So, so uh, he's, uh, he's up, up against a tough task, task especially, especially in a in Southern, Southern conference, conference that's, that's better than, than it's ever been, been if you believe, you believe uh, RPI, RPI rankings, rankings and, things and things like that. that. It's, it's hard, hard to believe that the SOCON, SOCON could lose Davidson and college, college of Charleston, Charleston and, somehow and somehow get better, get better. But, but that, that seems, seems to be what happened. happened. And, and so, a tough task for Duke. At the, At same the same time, time it's great to see Ed Conroy come, come back, back to the to Bulldogs. The Bulldogs. It'll, It'll be interesting, interesting to see how much, much better, better if, if, if at all, he can do than Duger did. did. Yeah. Do we have any idea what Duger Balcom's up to right now? I do, I not. do not. He is okay. not, not in, in coaching, coaching as far as, as, far as I, know. I know. Okay. Well, again, a great guy and will be missed. Hopefully, he'll still be around. I would say the Citadel was very fair, Jeff. They gave him plenty of years, and uh, it just didn't work out, unfortunately. And uh, as, as tough as it was to lose him, man, what a great thing getting Ed Conroy back, a guy that actually has won at the Citadel, and a guy who wears the ring, and a guy that many of the Citadel world knows. And uh, I think it's going to be really neat to see what Ed Conroy Part 2 does at Moultrie Street or Moultrie Avenue in Charleston, well, South Carolina. One thing one Ed has already done, done is got called Charleston, Charleston back on the schedule. schedule. And, and so, so that's, that's great, great to see for uh, Cougar, Cougar fans, fans, Bulldog fans, fans, 
and just, just the city, city of Charleston, Charleston in, general, in general, that game has been sorely missed, missed over, over the years. years. And, and I know, I know it's, it's a tough one for the Citadel. Citadel. College, College of Charleston, Charleston has, has all, all kinds of advantages in, in recruiting and, and other, other things, things over, over the, the Citadel. Citadel. But, but a game that, that, that people, people want to see, see. And, it's and it's a game, a game that puts butts in the seat, which the Citadel needs badly. Yeah. One thing I always thought of that game, Jeff, is the fact that it's just good for basketball in the low country. It is. It is. And there's, and there's no, no reason. reason. I know I Andrew agrees that the college and Charleston, Charleston Southern and the Citadel, Citadel should, not should not be playing, playing every year. year. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and no doubt. And I, was, and I and think, think part of it was, was because, because the, the uh, Earl Grant and, and he, he coached, coached at the Citadel, Citadel and, I and I think he had, had a pretty good relationship with Duggar. He didn't want to go, go and play against his friends. That's what he kept telling me. I know. And also part of it is that. The Citadel, the Citadel wanted to guarantee, guarantee money, money. Um, when they, they played, played the College, college of Charleston. Charleston now, you know, that, that, those, those, those issues, issues have kind of gone away under the new uh, coaching regime here. And, and, and I, think I think people, people forget like that, that. And, and when, when he was, he was here, here uh, three, three out of four, four times, times uh, uh, over kind of a two-season two stretch, stretch. Uh, the, uh, the Citadel, Citadel beat, beat the College of Charleston basketball. So Ed has proven that not only can he play against the Citadel, he can and it's, yeah. it's interesting, interesting the dynamic, dynamic between Pat and Ed, Ed Conroy. Conroy. Pat, Pat is a high-energy high guy and came into the College of Charleston with his, his Our City slogan. Uh, and, 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 and Ed, Ed sort, sort of took, took attention, attention to that at his, his opening, opening press, press conference. conference. So, so uh, a little, little bit of a rivalry, rivalry spark, spark there, there between, between two coaches as well. All right. And – have we got any news on the recruiting front for Citadel basketball? What kind of additions says they're going to be tipping off in just a few months? Well, well that's, that's a good, a good question. question. Uh, I, know I know they're, they're happy, happy with their recruiting, recruiting and, and we've, we've reported, reported the prospects as they sign, but the, the Citadel does not have, have a roster, roster yet, yet on their, their website. website. Hmm. So, so exactly, exactly who will be playing, playing for the Bulldogs, Bulldogs is a little, a little bit, bit of a mystery at this point. Okay. Well, Jeff, we know, I guess, again, we're putting you to extra work here today. You thought you were going to get off easy on this uh, swan song for you, our Jeff Hartzell tribute show. But another thing that it looks like he survived, Tony Skoll as baseball coach after the Bulldog baseball team. They did beat the Gamecocks. That was good. But they just continued to not be a 500 ball club. What, what's going on with Bulldog baseball? Well, Tony, well, Tony has, has, I believe, one, one more year, year on his, his contract. contract. As well. as well. So, so uh, uh, it could it be, be a year, year of big changes, changes <laughs> for Citadel Athletics, athletics. Uh, depending, uh, depending on what happens in football, football and the next, next baseball, baseball season. season. But, but uh, I, know I know Tony's, Tony's frustrated, frustrated that, that his rebuilding, rebuilding job has been quicker, quicker than, than it has. has. And uh, one, one thing, thing that Citadel fans, fans should look for, for uh, is, is the Possibility, possibility that undergrad transfers are, are going to be able, able to play for the, for the Citadel without being in the core of debt. Uh, it's, it's my understanding, understanding there's there nine such athletes, athletes on, on campus, campus right now, now none, none in football. football. But, but uh, in, in other, other sports, sports including, including basketball, basketball, I believe, there's, there's going to be transfer athletes playing for, for civil teams, teams that are, are not in the core of cadets. It's sort, it's sort of, of like, like the old days with the veteran, veteran race students, students, like, like Patrick Young in mm -hmm. basketball. So, so uh, this, this is, is a school, school policy, policy, I'm told, not, not driven by, by the athletic, athletic department. department. Uh, uh, it's, it's a, a they're, they're encouraging, encouraging for students, students as, a, as, a, as a way to boost enrollment at the school. But, but uh, uh, those, those transfer students, students who are athletes, athletes will be eligible, eligible to play, play for the Citadel. Citadel. Okay. Well, so uh, when, 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 I'm not when a big fan of that, but uh, I'm not in charge either. Yeah, when yeah, that when becomes that clear, uh, uh, Andrew, Andrew will be writing, writing about, about that, that uh, yeah, okay. coming, coming up. up and then. I think, I think there's, there's going to be, be a one or two, or two basketball, basketball players, players who fall in that category. category. Uh, yeah, so, so, as I said, my understanding is they got a transfer from Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt because of that. That's right. It was somebody 
Um, so, then, so, yeah, Ed, of course, Ed Conroy policy, was at Vanderbilt prior to coming to Citadel. Go ahead. That's, that's correct. correct. The school, school policy, policy for transfers, transfers is, is if you have, have 30, 30 hours, hours, you can you transfer, transfer in and get a Citadel degree uh, without, without joining, joining the Corps of Cadets. Uh, uh, it's, it's not the same degree. I understand as the cadet get it, but it is a Citadel degree. And for that reason, there's, There's no, no NCAA, NCAA rule, rule preventing, preventing them, them from playing, playing sports, sports, right? right. The transfer, transfer quote-unquote, quote unquote, day, day student. student. So, so we, we will, will see some, some of those popping up, up on little athletic, athletic rosters. rosters. And, and as, as I said, I'm told there's nine, nine such athletes, athletes on campus, campus right, right now. now. Okay. Across, Across various areas. All right. Well, I know because the Citadel does allow – it has that what we used to be called the evening college and more. They have to follow the rules of the NCAA, and so I guess if you're an enrolled person at a college, you you should be allowed to participate. My only problem, right, of course, right. right in our own conference, VMI has none of that. I don't even think they have veteran students there at VMI, and I know we're not VMI, but we're pretty darn close. So that's uh, that's my only only problem I've got because I I did have to wear a little uniform for four years there and do all that other stuff. It's it, it, it's, uh, it hasn't prevented, prevented BMI, BMI from, from uh, having, having success, success in football and yeah. basketball in recent years, years has, it? has it? And no, Vermont, not at all. I mean, they, they, they're they arguably a lot better have, football program right now. Furman just, just this year has added a graduate, graduate program, program on, on campus, campus that is, that is now, now allowing Furman to take graduate, graduate transfers, transfers for the first, the first time. time. Okay. So Clay Hendricks was telling me that's made a big difference. In football, in football already, already. being able, able to, to they, they their starting quarterback, quarterback back in here is a grad, grad transfer, transfer from Prisma so, so uh yeah, yeah you, know, you know you got to keep, keep up, up with the changing time, time. you got to keep up with the Joneses hey we're gonna talk a, a little bit more about sports before we get out of here in a moment but let me tell y'all about IPS packaging and automation it's a name you can trust since 1976, the nation's bicentennial year, IPS Packaging and Automation has been providing manufacturers and e-commerce companies with the very best packaging products and automation in the entire industry. IPS offers a complete line of packaging products. Hey, they got stretch films and 3M tapes, corrugated boxes, strapping, and equipment automation. IPS Packaging and Automation. It is headed up by Citadel alum Derek Murdoch. IPS Packaging Automation will analyze and streamline your current methods to improve your packaging process. Give them a call at 800-277-7007 to learn more or go to their website, ipack.com, ipack.com. IPS Packaging and Automation is a proud supporter of C-I-T-A-D-E-L, and we appreciate their great support. Still don't have an answer on our our big red palmetto dot store trivia question, and that was in nineteen or in twenty sixteen. The Citadel opened up their season on the road against Mercer, and on the second play from scrimmage for the Bulldog offense, Tyler Renew ran off a touchdown run, and I want to know the length of that TD run against the Mercer Bears in the twenty sixteen season. If you correctly tell me the answer by texting that answer to eight four three seven seven nine eighty four ninety six. It's right there on your screen. Eight four three seven seven nine eighty four ninety six. We'll get you a twenty five dollar gift certificate to Big Red Palmetto dot store. And speaking of Big Red Palmetto dot store, hey, gentlemen. There, all the all the people working there. You need to load us up. Andrews, he's wearing a darn Cubs cap. We need to get him a Citadel, some some merch from the Big Red Palmetto dot store. And look, I, I need I need some new stuff. I, I about worn out my really cool Citadel tartan shoes that I got from the Big Red Palmetto dot store. So we'll we'll get some good swag going forward. Jeff, you're out of luck. Well. well Maybe, Maybe I'll, I'll switch, switch to, to Waffle here. here. No, 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 no. Now, you're not out of luck. You got something the other year, remember? I think you passed it on to your daughter. I did. I did. A Citadel, Citadel hat that she yeah. likes to wear. Yeah, good, good. So, great stuff coming from Big Red Palmetto Dot Store. Okay, guys, we've talked football, basketball, baseball before we get, get out of here. Anything else we need to cover in your opinion? 
Well, I, I, I ran, ran into Dave Salazo, the former defensive, defensive line coach, coach uh, for, the for the Bulldogs, Bulldogs when uh, Charlie, Charlie Cat was the head coach. coach. He's kind of come back, back in town. town. He, he is, is working, working with uh, Oceanside, Oceanside Collegiate, Collegiate uh, Academy, Academy, which is a uh, kind of a kind magnet uh, high, high school in Mount Pleasant. But great to catch up with Dave. Dave was at that so for I think over ten years. So one of my favorite guys to talk with. Yeah, he was on the Maryland coaching staff for a long time up there yep, yep. with Frisian. Yep, yep. So with, with Ralph and with Charlie was on that staff as well. Great to hear. Well, Jeff, um, I'm going to put the burden back on you here. How, how are you going to be able to go through this fall without covering Citadel football every step of the way? It's going to be, be tough. tough. It's going to be, be different. different. You know, yeah, I will I definitely, definitely miss it. it. Uh, going, going to the to games, games uh, getting, getting to talk, to talk with the young, young men. men. Um, over, over the years, years we, don't we don't have, have quite, quite as much access, access to uh, the players, players as, we as we used to. to. I, remember I remember back, back in the in day, day, I'd go I'd over on Wednesdays during the lunch, lunch hour, hour and, and meet with players after, after they, they finished finish eating in the mess hall. hall. And, and that was always a fun time, getting to know them better. Not quite, Not quite like, like that, that anymore. anymore. And, and so, so um, but, but still, still fun. fun. I just, I just feel, feel like, like I was ready, ready for a new step in my career. career. And when and the, the job, job came open, open uh, I, was I was happy and blessed that they agreed, agreed to let me try, try it. it. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm, I'm asking Andrew, Andrew to do a good job so he makes me look good. Well, we're excited for you, Jeff. I mean, that's a heck of a jump for you. And, you know, I'm not going to try to put the pressure on you, Jeff, but you didn't just get started in this business yesterday. You've been doing this a long time, and and uh, you did that Citadel Beat so, a great job. And what an honor it is to, to go from that beat to being the sports editor of your paper. It is, it is an, honor, an honor, and I, I definitely, definitely look, look at, at it that, that way. way. You know, uh, uh, over my, my career, career, I've, I've covered, covered Clemson, Clemson, Carolina, Carolina the Citadel. Citadel. I was, I was Covered Charleston, Charleston Southern, Southern a lot. I was, I was on the college of Charleston, Charleston beat. Way, way back, back when we went to the NAIA tournament in Kansas, Kansas City. City. How, How long, long ago was that? that? So, so I've done a little, little bit of everything, everything in my, my career, career. And then this was a, a great, great next, next step for me to, to see how the editing side of everything, everything worked. worked. And, and uh, it's, it's all, all down, down to guys, guys like Andrew and Gene Sapphoff. John Blau, David Moninger, David Shelton, who covers high schools in Charleston Southern Forest, Tommy Braswell, and Mike Moodyham, who do a great job with our stringers on outdoors and wrestling and golf. It's all down to them and the hard work that they put in and the great jobs that they do that has given our sports department the deserved reputation that it has, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad, glad to try to, try to keep, keep that tradition going. Well, since I'm the non-Post and Courier person here on the uh, show today, let me personally tell you how awesome the Post and Courier is. I have been a newspaper publisher. I've worked in journalism since I left the gates over there at LaSanne Gate, and most newspapers are struggling. They're, they're barely hanging on. And some of them, like the one I've worked for, they don't even exist anymore. But the Post and Courier at postandcourier.com is a growing newspaper. They are a Pulitzer Prize winning newspaper. And they're a paper that even if you don't live in the low country, you still need to be getting because it's so easy to get the digital subscription. So, Jeff, I'm going to turn it back over to you, Mr. Sports Editor. How do people get the Post and Courier? Go to postandcourier.com and you hit that subscribe button. And, and, and you and are correct. correct. We are a growing newspaper. We have staff in, in Columbia and Greenville, Greenville Myrtle, Myrtle Beach. Beach. Uh, we're, going we're going to invade Hilton Head soon. soon. So uh, it, it is a growing newspaper. We're fortunate to be a family-owned paper whose ownership is devoted to having a thriving newspaper. In Charleston, in Charleston, and, and they've, they've done, done everything, everything they can, can 
to make that happen. So we are, we are fortunate, fortunate to, work to work in this, in this city, city and for and this district. district. And if you have not done this, last year y'all offered a really cool like four for four type thing. Do you have anything similar to that right now, Jeff? I don't, I don't know, know exactly, exactly what, what the, the uh, deals, deals are right, right now, now, but if you go to questionsfair.com, hit subscribe, you can see what the offers are. And we should mention for any Clemson and Carolina fans that are listening, we have the Game Talks Now newsletter or the Tiger Take newsletter where David, David Conger, Conger and John Blau gives us inside, inside scoop, scoop on what's, what's going, going on with USC and Clemson. And Clemson. So, that's so that's something, something else uh, folks, folks can consider. consider. All right. Well, you got me signed up, so it's the way to go. And, and trust me, the Citadel, as a, as a fan, alum of, of our great little school, we are so blessed that a newspaper like the Post and Courier has someone like Andrew now on that beat, a lot of these schools in the SoCon just don't have the kind of love that we get in Charleston. So we, we kind of get spoiled. Jeff, you've, you've kind of spoiled us. And now Andrew, and hey, Andrew, I don't mean to put the pressure on you, but I did get a text the other day from somebody who knew we were going to be together. He's like, Andrew needs to step it up because <laughs> I guess Jeff set the bar pretty darn high. Yeah, yeah. You well, sure did. I mean, there, I don't think anybody <coughs> has covered the uh, – that, that beat as long, long as he has, has and he certainly did a great job, job on it. And you're right. I got huge shoes to fill. He said small, but they're, they're pretty good. <laughs> so I'll do I'll the best, best I can. Oh, you will, because I know Jeff's going to be on you. And if you if he doesn't, then we'll get all of Citadel Nation on you. But, no, we're excited. And, and again, Jeff, just congratulations. So it's good to see good people getting a chance. And, and you, you got well, a great chance you. there. And, and let, me, uh, let me just say this. We don't, we don't cover, cover the Citadel, Citadel out, of out of the goodness of our heart. It's good business. The Citadel, the Citadel is a, is a close, close third behind USC and Clemson, Clemson in our, our metric, metric on the on website. website. And, and uh, Citadel, Citadel fans, fans are, are they're not huge, huge numbers, numbers, but they're, they're very, very loyal, loyal and they're very, very interested, interested in what's, what's going, going on, on at their school. school. And, the and the numbers have shown, shown that over, over the years. years. And, I'm and I'm sure Andrew, Andrew will do a great job keeping that up. Well, we will make sure we go up to number one now that Andrew's <laughs> on the beat. But three is a pretty good place to start with all the other competing programs in South Carolina looking for clicks as well. Well, guys, great to have you. Great to have our start. Thank you to our audience. We did not get a correct guess on our trivia question, so I, I guess I'll just have to spill the beans this week. Well, no, I won't. I won't because sometimes we get an answer after the show, and I go ahead and award them. So I'll just leave the trivia question open. If you missed it, too bad. Rewind. You'll be able to see it if you're watching the replay of this. But we'll have another Big Red Palmetto trivia question asked next week when we're back on here recapping the Campbell, what we hope win, and getting ready for the home opener against the ETSU Bucks at Johnson Hagen Stadium. Jeff, Thank you. Best of luck to you. Maybe we'll be able to sneak you back on here one more time this fall. And Andrew, welcome aboard Citadel Gray Line to you, sir. Yeah, really looking forward to spending uh, this football season with you guys. It's going to be fun, and we appreciate all of you tuning in and watching. For Andrew Miller, for Jeff Hartzell, I'm John Rawl. Thanking you once again for being a part of Citadel Gray Line. Check out the podcast on our Facebook page, and you can catch that at Citadel Gray Line. And we'll be right back here next week. Thank you for watching.